Welcome to Wild. What will we see in the video this time? We are going to look at a magnetic motor that uses the effect of a magnetic switch, which apparently can switch off and on the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. This magnetic switch is available for purchase and I am rebuilding the necessary constellation, physically, with two permanent magnets to see exactly what happens. Let's start with the desired functional principle. Two permanent magnets, here marked red-blue, are fixed close to each other, whereby the lower magnet can rotate under the upper, completely fixed magnet in such a way that their poles temporarily attract and temporarily repel each other without the magnets moving away from each other. The magnetic switch this is based on has a rotating handle that supports two settings. Currently, it is in the mode in which no magnetic field penetrates the outside. The screws remain in place. If you turn the handle by 180 degrees, the magnetic field is activated. The screws are attracted, stuck in the magnetic field of the magnetic switch until the handle is turned 100 degrees again. Great device! We now look inside the device and see what is happening here. Two magnets are twisted against each other, though that opposite poles can attract each other. And what's more, they also attract other metal objects across their polar alignment, like this metal disc. But if the screw is now also to be lifted, then the effect of the magnetic switch occurs. The screw remains in place. The magnetic field runs through the metal disc alone. Now we turn the upper magnet by 100 degrees. There's a repulsion between the magnets because the same poles meet. Here too, the metal disc is attracted. This time, however, the screw can also be lifted because the magnetic field spreads beyond the metal disc. Though, this is how the magnetic switch works in theory. The theory should be verified by an experiment. This is where I come into play. In the video, the inventor also omits the metal disc between the magnets and the metal cylinder that is lifted. So it has to be tested whether the motor could also run without the disc. So I'll build something quickly. The two neodymium magnets are glued into the plastic plates so that I am able to place them exactly on the top of each other in the position of magnetic attraction and position of magnetic repulsion. One of the poles is marked in black color on each magnet and on the plastic plate so that you can see how they are aligned. 
because it's almost impossible to keep the plates together in the position of the magnetic repulsion for a longer time, I fix the plates later with screws. Let's start with the position of magnetic attraction, where the black marks must be on the opposite side. As expected, the metal disc sticks to the magnets when the poles are in the position of magnetic attraction. The screw is not attracted, similar as it happens in the magnetic switch. Since my metal plate has a hole in the middle, the screw is still attracted a little in the experiment, but in principle everything is exactly as the theory says. Now comes the difficult part. The magnets have to be placed on top of each other in the position of magnetic repulsion, though the black line has to touch the sides of the plastic plates. This can hardly be done with my hands alone, so I screw the plates together. The screws themselves are too far away from the magnets to be expected to influence them. If I now bring the plates into the alignment of the magnetic repulsion, it is already easy to see that the magnets want to move away from each other. The plastic plates bend outwards. So I also tighten the second screw. Then the magnets have no choice but to stay together in disgust. This time too, and as expected the metal disc sticks to the magnets, even though this time the poles are in the position of magnetic repulsion. This time the screw is magnetically attracted beyond the metal disc, even though the screw obviously prefers to stick directly to the magnet. In my experiment, if the screw could not pop out to the side of the magnet, it would stick to the metal disc. The magnetic field is still active, just like in the magnetic switch example. The Inventure's magnetic motor does not use a metal disc, but relies solely on the rotation of the magnets. The motor would therefore not have to work for this reason alone, as the metal cylinder would be continuously attracted. But even if the Inventure were to use the magnetic switch correctly, there would be a more serious problem that would militate against the motor's functioning. To explain this, I will briefly show my gravity model, which makes the invisible magnetic field visible. In the model, the magnetic force becomes a deepening in a glass block and the marble ball that falls into the deepening is its effect. A balance is created. The ball is forced to roll up the slope when the magnets are moved sideways to each other. This requires force. It does not matter whether magnets or magnetic materials meet, the effect is identical.
that is exactly the opposite with the magnetic repulsion. A hill is created and the marble ball wants to roll down. The magnets give way to each other and a balance is created. If a magnetic participant, in this case the steel ball, is actively influenced from the outside, the marble ball is lifted. It falls back as soon as the disturbance is over. In the example of the magnetic switch, we start with a magnetic attraction. It is not important that the magnets here are polarized in the opposite directions, only the attraction is important. A deepening is created. In the position of magnetic repulsion as expected, a hill is created, the ball is forced upwards. If we do not give the magnets the opportunity to avoid each other, the ball is permanently at the maximum of the repulsion. The ball exerts a permanent force on the hill from above, pressure that we could feel with our hands if we held the magnets in position ourselves. Now let's see how it behaves when the magnets are brought from the state of magnetic attraction into the position of magnetic repulsion by twisting them. The ball is forced up the slope from the deepening while the field of repulsion increases more and more. And then the ball continues to be pushed up the resulting hill with force. The force required to bring the magnets into the position of magnetic repulsion is no less by twisting the magnets than by letting them approach each other. The amount of energy required to do this far exceeds the motor's ability to recover it solely through the gravity of the metal cylinder in free fall when the magnetic field is switched off. So the principle is a nice idea and the construction is very appealing, but unfortunately it cannot work in principle. I hope I was able to shed some light on the colorful world of perpetual motion motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching, have fun!